Where do we think we are? Inflation is still high, but it's finally, thankfully, on a downward trajectory. And it seems likely that that will accelerate, if only because of the, the base effects of where we were this time last year. So that's good. But where will it go? The government remains bullish about GDP growth next year. But are, ex are its expectations realistic, given that there are relatively fragile projections uh, for the EU, and most importantly for Germany, uh, which is Hungary's most significant partner. What impacts will that war that is still raging in Ukraine, and perhaps more worryingly, the new war that is going on in Gaza, have on growth? Will energy prices spike again this winter? Will we ever see those missing EU funds What's the tax outlook for next year? And perhaps especially importantly, what's the future for the special sectoral taxes? To discuss these matters, and who knows where else the conversation may take us, we have very two very distinguished experts. Forgive me. Karoj <coughs> Radnai, uh, is the managing partner of Anderson in Hungary and chair of the tax committee at the American Chamber of Commerce in Hungary. He has more than 20 years of experience in various fields of taxation. Having started his professional career at what was then Arthur Anderson in 1997, then he joined EY in 2002, where he worked as a senior manager until taking leave from there in 2009. Karoy is also an old friend of both the boardroom, he's been a frequent guest, enjoying the breakfast without having to talk for it, uh, but he's also been one of our uh, favoured speakers. Uh, in fact, he was one of the guests at our very first uh, discussion. So, Karoy, it's delightful to have you back with us again. Um, it is, of course, also always nice to get new perspectives. Our other guest this morning is making her boardroom roundtable debut. Barbara Kunz has been a partner at PwC Hungary since a promotion to that role in January 2021. She joined the big, four, the big four accountancy firm's tax advisory service line in 2008. Her primary area of expertise is value-added tax advisory. Um, and many of you will already know Barbara because uh, for the last few years she's been deeply involved in doing the interviews uh, for, the, for PwC's annual CEO survey um, and also in presenting the results of those. And I know that, that that work has already started, hasn't it? So if you have not yet been contacted by Barbara in person or PwC in general, you may well be in the very near future. Excellences, ladies and gentlemen, this is your BBJ Boardroom Roundtable panel. So, let's get on with, uh, with the questions, because that's really why we're here. Um, I, think, I think where we'll start uh, is the most immediate, potentially the most immediate impact um, for, for what's ahead of us. So. Um, I mentioned, uh, I mentioned energy uh, costs. We, we all remember uh, quite painfully um, the spike last year. What's your sense, and, and of course you are both tax experts and, and we will importantly get into your, your tax uh, expertise later, uh, but you also both represent um, companies that have huge networks and get to talk to a lot of people about a lot of things. So. Uh, I, I'm curious as to what you think our expectation levels should be for energy costs this winter. Should we be worried about them spiking up again? Does the, does the war uh, in, in Gaza, not least the war next door, have any impact on that? Um, and Barbara, since this is your first time with us, we'll start, we'll start with you. Thank you, and first of all, thank you for having me. In, and we also wish you enjoying your breakfast and hope at the end of the day you will think that we earned eating something as well. Um, 
Well, it's a very interesting question because um, there are several aspects that might affect this. Generally, what we saw, and indeed I'm not an energy expert, but I, I do have a lot of uh, discussions with investors, CEOs and companies, um, what they are expecting that the energy prices during the beginning and middle of the year that the energy prices will kind of stagnate. Uh, we reached the peak last year and now um, all the gas um, uh, containers are filled by the countries. So generally, um, gas prices will not go higher, but that was before um, uh, the war started in Israel and Gaza. I don't know whether you had the chance to read, there was a very interesting World Bank report just published several days ago, which made a kind of a projection what kind of effect the Israel Hamas war can have, uh, especially in oil prices, that will have an effect on the overall energy prices. They worked out several scenarios uh, depending uh, on the projections whether the war will escalate, and hopefully it will not, but it, if it will escalate further to the region. And they said that generally the war has already a price increase in effect because petrol prices are going up, or oil price was going up already by 6% due to the war. Uh, but they made some very, very pessimistic projections in case other countries would be involved in the war. And they said that uh, oil prices in that case can even reach uh, the, the level of the oil price maximum that was reached in, one in 1978 during the war. But this is the maximum escalation scenario. Minimum scenario, if it will just stick just, sorry to say that, to the Israel-Hamas um, um, area not escalating to further countries, then additional 3% three, three is projected. So uh, we're waiting to see what's going to happen. I, I, I think it's, it's up to the upcoming weeks and the actions of the war, how the oil prices will be affected. Uh, if obviously, and uh, not obviously, but if the war escalates uh, and the oil prices will go higher than they are now, that will have a a devastating effect on the energy prices considering the next year. So all the companies I was talking to, and uh, as Robin said, we already started the discussions and the CEO interviews regarding the survey uh, already in November. They said that they are looking at the news. Uh, they are waiting for the projections to come up. Uh, they calculate uh, in a conservative way, increasing their projections regarding the energy prices in their costs and they are planning to spend more and more in the green transitioning uh, to renewables in order to decrease their, um, um, their kind of vulnerability, vulnerability regarding uh, the overcoming years uh, to energy prices. Uh, that's an interesting thought, actually, that, that one of the uh, side effects of the energy price last year, or the last winter, the, the, the spike was that Suddenly, a lot of a lot more people seem to be a lot more serious about transitioning and and finding uh, alternatives. Kauri, what what are you hearing from your networks? Similar story. Yeah, and uh, thank you very much again for for being here and bon appetit. I hope you enjoy your <laughs> breakfast. Uh, tell me how it is, and then <laughs> after that. Um, so I feel myself that uh, so there's so many unknown factors that it's like uh, when we are in the beginning of a World Cup and the reporter asks the interviewee that uh, who is going to win the World Cup. So we have guess, but uh, but uh, nobody knows really the truth. Um, so many factors can change and uh, and uh, and have a have an influence on the final thing. Uh, I agree with you that there is a very strong trend on the transition of uh, to the renewables. Uh, first of all, that there was a drop in in consumption because, uh, especially households, but also uh, 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 companies also realized that uh, they have to be serious about their energy consumption, and it, it was absolutely astonishing that how much the energy consumption could drop in Hungary. So it, it shows that uh, that how much waste we, we actually generated in, in previous years. And I, 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 as I feel, and this is what I, I keep hearing back, that this trend is going to continue. Uh, we see that there are uh, going to be new tax incentives also promoting uh, energy efficiency and uh, and uh, and uh, investments in 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 in, in uh, in, in changing the dependency of uh, of, of gas, uh, 
Uh, and uh, there is another thing which we, we, we tend to forget, and I think it, it has an indirect uh, impact on the, on, the, on, the, on the prices of the energy prices, that, that Hungary is, is a bit different uh, from, from the rest of the Europe, like Slovakia and Hungary, landlocked countries, and also the Czech Republic are very much dependent on the pipelines. And that's going to be, I think, the main concern because uh, the pipeline to Hungary uh, goes mainly from Russia through the Ukraine. And uh, we keep hearing that uh, this, this can be a problematic thing. So my concern, and not only mine, but, but um, that this is what I hear from, from clients, that the, the real concern is not only the, the price of the energy, but whether we will have uh, gas enough. So that that uh, there will be gas in the pipeline, uh, and then the price is 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 kind of a secondary thing. Uh, you may know that in 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 August, there was the government decree, which was a uh, which which didn't got too much publicity, but it's a very concerning government decree because it is about prioritizing customers. That uh, if the gas had to be turned down then who should get gas and who, who can be uh, exclu excluded from the network. And uh, the MVM has just recently sent out uh, uh, like a kind of a survey uh, that to each company to declare whether they are uh, uh, entitled to, to enjoy uh, uh, any exception category so that, uh, that they can, they can uh, get the, the gas no matter what. Or, or they are not falling under these, uh, any of these categories. Uh, and uh, everybody, all, everybody believes that this is just uh, the worst case scenario. Uh, I don't remember that, uh, in, at, at least in my, during my career, anything like this happened, that the government had to make plans that uh, how to prioritize customers. So there is a very strong concern within the government that uh, there will be a problem for, from the gas uh, coming, uh, coming from Russia. And then uh, that's why I say that the, the price is only secondary, that if, if we don't have the gas, then that's, that's going to be a very dr dramatic problem. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you have to have the gas to be able to pay for it to start with. Um, all right, well, th th let's talk some more. Uh, and by the way, uh, considering that neither of you is, by your own admission, Energy experts, thank you for that. I think that's a, a useful framing of uh, of where we are. Um, so let's start to talk about some 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 figures. Um, the MBH Bank, uh, the second largest bank in the in the country now, um, put out some inflation um, targets uh, last week, I think. Um, and of course, it goes without saying that there are there are other. Uh, other forecasts out there. You do not need to rely just on this. But the, the, the target they put out was that they thought inflation would be at 11% by the end of this year. Um, and I, I know a, a lot of other people are saying it will be single digits. So um, there's some question mark already over that. Uh, and MBH then, then said that they thought it would be 6% by the end of, of 2024. So do we think that, that either of, or both of those, um, those forecasts uh, are predictable? Um, again, this isn't strictly speaking the purview of, uh, of tax, but, but you know, your companies do deal uh, with a lot of forecasting. So, so what are you hearing and what are your expectations for where inflation is carried? We'll start with you this time. So uh, I think it doesn't really matter whether it's like it's 11 percent or 10 percent because it's an annual average. Uh, maybe it looks nicer if it's a single digit, but it doesn't really make any difference. Uh, what really matters is the the last three months or the or the next three months or the to to see the, those trends. So uh, it's uh, it's visible that we are already over the big inflation crisis. And uh, comparing the last three months or, or, the, or the projections for the, or the next three months, within the European Union average, we are already uh, either in the average or in the better half. So that, uh, that uh, in other countries uh, still face nowadays a higher inflation. So just 
if we look at the last three months of what happened, uh, which is partly due to the recession. So there is no way further to increase the prices because there is no demand. And I think this is going to continue. So I think it's, uh, it seems very reasonable that if there is a projection next year that uh, the, the annual inflation would be 6%. Uh, maybe even uh, less. It, it it very much depends on the economy, um, and uh, and still, I mean, the, the, the it will be the opposite. So that the prime rate will be now much higher than the inflation itself, which will also push the inflation down. Uh, you know that the prime rate was uh, 13 percent, and then there was a 5 percent interbank rate. Uh, on top, which was together 18 percent, but the inflation was 25 percent. So it's uh, the 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 interest rate was not high enough to 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 control. It was good for for controlling the the the, the ex exchange rate of the foreign, but it was not enough high to to control the inflation. Now it will be the opposite that that uh, that the prime rate will be higher than the the inflation rate itself. So I. I, I'm, I'm quite optimistic about the inflation itself, so I think it uh, we, we will continue to see a declining trend, and and I think the six percent is an absolute reasonable uh, projection. Optimistic. I'm pleased to hear that. Well, Barbara, are you optimistic? Well, kind of optimistic too, because what I can say, the trend is good. I, I think that's what we shall focus on. Uh, in the last one and a half, two years, uh, we were just focusing on the negative side. So something really happening now, something positive is ha happening, what we can see in the trends. Hopefully it will not turn. Uh, so I indeed agree with Károly that um, uh, this uh, uh, the last several months were, were a good good tendency and a good side where we are going. Hopefully there will be no international events that will turn this down and we shall just concentrate on our, on our smaller environment rather than on a global level. Um, and I think uh, what might be of interesting regarding the, um, uh, the inflation regarding next year is, is what the salary deal we will be, how the demand will increase, whether it will increase at all. There will be a, a realistic increase, a real increase in the, um, uh, in the salaries. Um, they cannot discuss it in the end of the year and beginning of January. They are kind of projecting a 10%. Uh, increase that can, if we reach uh, the inflation level as projected till the end of the year, that can finally mean a real increase in the salaries that can generate a bit of a, de a demand, but not big enough to once again make the inflation roll. So um, let's keep this track, I would say, uh, and let's have uh, the economies around us and the investment environment increasing, and hopefully a situation will get normalized because what happened in the obviously the last two years what what far than normal normalized would be nice um okay so that's th that's inflation which sort of leads us to or uh, that creates some of the environment within which growth happens obviously um now the government uh, the last forecast i saw from the government they were still talking about um, GDP growth of 4.6% for, for, for next year. Um, no. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll allow you to expand on that in a second. Um, so some, the, the immediate question I have is that that's, you know, that, that, that's fine, but is it, is it realistic, as I said at the, the start in the introduction, is it realistic given uh, what the growth expectations for the EU are, and particularly for, for Germany? And also, we, we already know that there are <laughs> you know the, the the last few years have taught us that that unknowables are always around the corner, um, ready to knock you off track. So um, you're very definitive in your no, Karoy. I'll 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 go with you. I, expand on that that no. I just looking at the trends. So I mean that the government was always optimistic and was they they. They expected like uh, two or three or four percent. I don't remember how much growth for this year, and uh, we will be lucky if it will be actually zero or or above. And uh, the trend is not doesn't seem to 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 change very much. So I mean, still we have the inflation, still we have a a, a very high interest rate, which uh, and the 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 national bank is very much determined that as long as the inflation is is like above 3%, they will not let uh, 
uh, the interest rate come down. Uh, also, there is a very, I mean, I think it's a consensus between the government and the national bank that they want to keep the foreign uh, stable uh, in the vicinity of 400 or a bit below it, uh, which still, I mean, Hungary is still very vulnerable. Uh, so in order to keep the foreign stable, they have to keep the, the interest rate high enough. Uh, and although we keep hearing uh, about new investments coming from China or South Korea, it will need time that these uh, investments realize. It will not, they will not go into operation next year, maybe after next year. So uh, there, the government is very committed about uh, um, starting over the economy, uh, boosting the economy, but they don't really have now the assets to, to make it with an immediate effect. So I, I, it's a wishful thinking, uh, I think, this, this 4%. I, I, realistically speaking, it's 1% to 2%, which, which I would uh, think realistic. Barbara, do you agree with that figure, 1% to 2%? Mm, I will be once again a bit more optimistic. I would go with the two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, there were some projections, um, not from a government side, that even 2.5 is reachable. Um, and yes, I agree with Kairoi that this investment that are coming now, China is obviously doing good. They are not doing good as they were doing a year ago mm -hmm. because of some real estate issues, but that th their economy is still running around 6.57% of growth. That's, that's a very good growth, uh, especially from a European perspective. Uh, these investments are coming, onshoring is, is a kind of a master in a European level after the COVID. Some of them will already kick, kick in next year, but uh, indeed 25, 26 will be the year when, when these Chinese investors or South Korean investors will have a real effect on the economy. Uh, and Germany is indeed does not have a, an extremely positive uh, expectations regarding next year. Um, However, there can be, and this obviously affects because we are very much <laughs> related to each other. We are kind of work, uh, walking hand in hand, or at least he's German is the one walk, uh, walking in front of us, but he's kind of pulling us with a. Uh, um, but let's hope that there will be some good news regarding EU funds, at least some part of them. Um, there were just two questions received back from the EU uh, in the course of last week. Uh, that's a good sign, not a very good sign, but at least moderately good one. Um, there will be still negotiations going on, and at least partially we will have access to the EU funds that can somehow escalate the development of, of the Hungarian economy. I'd, I'd like to come back to the EU funds uh, later. Just before we get there, though, um, we, we've talked about uh, inflation, um, <coughs> and it seems to me that the, the National Bank of Hungary uh, is doing what central banks um, uh, across the world are doing. The, they are talking about getting back to their, uh, their old targets. Um, and the target for, for the MNB for uh, inflation was 2 to 4%, give or take. Um, but I, but I wonder, is that is that realistic? If we if if we think that we might be at six percent next year, then, then, uh, you know, uh, clearly we are two or three years away from getting back to, to to two percent. So is it? Uh, and this isn't particularly a, uh, about the central bank here, because I know the um, that in in the UK, uh, the Bank of England is is still targeting um, actually pretty similar level two percent. But there, there, it seems to me there now there are more people asking the question, is that realistic in any way? Are we ever going to, or I never say ever, but are, are we going to get back any time soon to low interest uh, environments? So what's your, your expectation, Barbara? Is it realistic or not? I will not say such a hard no than Karoi said before, <laughs> but... But I would say a week no, <laughs> at least according to my personal opinion. So uh, uh, definitely the direction is decreasing the interest, but uh, I it's a big question uh, whether, whether and if, 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 if we will, when we will reach a much lower interest rate. So it's, it's highly optimistic, uh, I think, having these projections to have 2% within, within a one, two year period. Uh, global events and global economic expectations according to my personal opinion, do not project this kind of 
sh maybe within a five, seven year period, but who knows what will happen. Uh. It's, it's, uh, now, uh, I, I what I uh, user usually say that previously we made three year plans, uh, taking into account the last five years, or four, uh, we learned to make six month or one year plans because no one knows what will happen in the next week. <laughs> For a hobble moment, I thought you were gonna go to five year plans there. Which is, uh, which is an echo we don't need to go to. Karoy. Yeah, I, d I, I don't think it, uh, the low interest rate uh, will come in, in uh, uh, come soon. Uh, and especially because of the, of the vulnerability of the Hungarian foreign. Uh, I think this is going to be the main uh, uh, aspect and focus that they want to stabilize the, the Hungarian currency and as long as uh, the, the economy is vulnerable and there is a huge budget deficit that the government has to do with uh, something as long as the, the budget deficit is big then there is a big push on the Hungarian foreign if there is a big push on the Hungarian foreign then the interest has to be high uh, and then it's a circular thing because then if the interest is high then it costs a lot of money for the government and then it keeps the budget uh, deficit high enough. And uh, if they want to cut back the budget deficit, they have to do something with the either with the spend or to increase the revenue. Uh, both uh, has a pushback on the on the economy. So it's a it's a it's a very difficult thing. So the, that's why I'm I think that uh, we'll not see a, a dramatic change next year. The interest rates will be still high enough which has a very negative aspect on investments. Uh, so only those companies will invest who can source uh, money outside of Hungary, who have markets outside of Hungary, which are now the multinational companies who actually use Euro, not the Hungarian foreign uh, or dollar, um, which m again makes Hungary more and more open economy, uh, which is not really the trend how to stabilize the economy itself. So it's, uh, I think it will take years that, that the government can stabilize this situation. Barbara suggested maybe seven years. Do you, do you think that's good realistic? Seven years, yes. Uh, seven years is, is big enough. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot that can happen in seven years. Now, we talked about, about the EU funds. Um, and uh, and I noticed that Minister Navratic was was very positive again. He said we'll we'll have the money by the end of November. But it seems to me that we've been hearing similar comments for quite some time. Um, so where do we think where do we think we are now, Barbara? We we've got a sort of hint from you that 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 perhaps things are moving in a more positive direction than they have been. But um, do you think we're going to see that money, or will we see? all of the money or is it going to be salami tactics where we see a little bit here a little bit there what are, what are our expectations salami tax tactics definitely so um it was just recent news that um uh, regarding um uh, the independency of the courts there were just only two questions uh, that requires additional information and not seven was accept uh, accepted at least for now uh, that's a kind of uh, a good sign, uh, at least regarding some parts of the sources. Uh, and uh, if we cannot find a solution together with the EU, some parts of the sources will be lost forever, especially the credit part regarding um, uh, the RRF. So everybody is working on the solution, uh, but everybody is working on the solution, as you just said, for two years now, uh, without actual results. Um, now, what uh, what I heard, and Mr. Navratich also said that they have a kind of a leverage position because budget should be voted. Uh, Ukrainian uh, rebuild sources and the procedures has been voted. Um, if uh, Hungarian government's viewpoint might be a bit of a pla flexible, uh, then the EU can kind of benefit us by allocating some of the sources at least. Uh, but we've been there. We've been there last year as well. And exactly we heard at end of the year we're going to have some access to the sources exactly this period last year. Uh, but we are running out of time. So um, if we do not get some parts of the sources very soon, that there is projection that we will not get any. And I think even the Hungarian government is not interested in reaching that point because we need the sources. They are kind of fueling mm -hmm. the development the, um, 
uh, the investments, the governmental investments, they already had to stop a lot of investment because of the uh, because of the lack of the sources and that does not help in putting uh, the Hungarian economy on a growth path again. Yeah, Kadley, just b just before you, you say whatever it is that you want to say, um, it might be useful, if we can, can you remind us uh, the amounts that we're talking about? It's two different amounts that we're talking about, isn't it? So what's the, what are the figures that are, that are out there in theory on the table if uh, Hungary manages to convince um, the EU that it should get the money? You asked now very difficult, so I didn't prepare. I, I forgot the, the figure. I, I remember that, that it was like 14 billion euro for the entire period. Uh, that, uh, but it's not entirely lost. And uh, like uh, 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 three billion euro was the RRF. I remember, and uh, and there was a four billion euro part, which was the cohesion fund. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, so this seven billion was, I, if I'm not mistaken, that was the the problematic part, um, and uh, and uh, and w what Minister Navracic was very optimistic about is the three billion part, was the RRF, where Hungary made a lot of progress in fulfilling the requirements of the EU, um, and the four billion cohesion fund was still a big question mark whether it would be received and then the, because part was already financed and uh, or and uh, and there is a, a withheld amount um, and uh, when minister Navracic was very optimistic was still before the election in Poland and he actually he made a note that if if the opposition wins in Poland that can change a bit the position not dramatically but can can have a negative effect on the timing and the, the 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 real problem is the timing because we are heading to the to the European uh, election. What is the name of this the, this European Parliament election, uh, which is going to be in June, and that's going to be the focus then. And uh, and uh, most of the politicians will not want to to probably give any excuse to Hungary before that. Um, and uh, and uh, Minister Navracic also said that December is going to be a very decisive month. So either we get the funds in December, or if we don't get the funds in December, then he didn't really know when to to to, to receive. But I, I I don't really share the view that we will not get anything. I see now very much that we will get definitely the three billion uh, euro part, but but it will probably take more time what Minister Navracic would uh, like. I agree that this is a, it would be crucial, uh, especially with the high interest rates. Uh, the bank financing is not really an alternative for local governments and for, for companies. So with the EU funds, and not only the EU funds, but also the, the interest-free loan that can be, uh, can be and that's, that's a much more significant amount, and uh, that can also stabilize the Hungarian currency. Um, so, so that that would have a very critical uh, uh, impact. And if we don't get it in December, then that's again a very uh, difficult prospect for for next year. Do you think it's possible that that if we don't get it in December, that that four million will will, will just go, will disappear? No, no. I I think it would just like it that would be a one year uh, financing problem again <laughs> which is n which is not good news um so let's th th let's hope that that optimism from from minister Navratic is uh, is well placed for for, for for once um now talking of the uh, of the eu and the euro and the balance rate this is the very important question i have to tell you uh panel um, from from the CEOs um, because we are coming up to Christmas we're coming up to skiing season almost all of our CEOs are going to go skiing um, and they want to know what the euro exchange rate is going to be so uh, do we think do we think I, it's I 400 that you were uh, asking about the snow whether there would be any snow <laughs> it's uh, well, uh, 
if, if you feel if you feel well placed to tell us where there'll be snow, then then I'm sure that information will be gratefully received as well. Uh, but now, wh what are your expectations for f for the euro? We've talked um, a, a, about it and the contradictions that are involved with the high interest and uh, and so on and so forth. So, so do you think that we should be looking around 400 for next year? Yeah, I think it will be a good average. I uh, I really do hope uh, that it will not go beyond 400 because if it goes beyond 400 then again very negative trends would start so we have already experienced a year ago that the hungarian society almost converted to the euro to the adoption of the euro in practice in the economy so that that uh, car prices started to uh, to appear in, in in euro real estate prices started to appear in euro uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, rental prices started to appear in euro and uh, and also there was a big push from and I think you all, all shared this there was a big push from employees that mm -hmm. whether or salary could be converted to euro uh, which is which which is very harmful for the Hungarian economy if 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 uh, if everybody starts to think about to to expect that the, the Hungarian currency is no longer uh, reliable and they they have to find other alternative ways. So then, then the practically the national bank would lose its control, um, and uh, and I, that's why I think that the, the the strong focus will be on the on the stability of the currency. Uh, if if it goes beyond 400, it 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 shows that uh, the government cannot control the budget deficit, uh, and then then uh, a lot of things would, would start to escalate. So I really and. and Inflation will start again, mm -hmm. so that's why I think that that uh, the both the government and the national bank wants to stabilize and keep it under 400. Barbara, I agree with that. We've seen several examples, several uh, around us that when an economy unofficially introduces euro, that's not a good place to be. Uh, so we definitely have to avoid that, and I agree with Caro that uh, that can only be uh, done by the stable foreign uh, euro exchange rate, and for the sake of all the employees and everyone who received a salary uh, in foreign, but wants to go skiing in January, February, I hope that the exchange rate will be stable as somewhere around 400 or below that. We talked about... Um uh, unofficial adoption um, of the euro and apologies I, I'm not trying to throw you under a bus here but um, do you have any concept um, in terms of time of when when Hungary might be in a position to adopt now I, I know that there are at least three variables there first of all you've got to meet the criteria so that's variable number one variable number two um, you don't just join the euro, you have to be invited to join the euro. So, so the EU has to, be, um, uh, has to be willing. And then variable number three, the government itself has to be willing. Um, I don't know, for example, your, 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 uh, your boss, Tamash, um, a, a few round tables ago was uh, very clear in his messaging that he thought the euro was not a good idea for, for, uh, for Hungary, at least not any time soon. So do you have any sort of concept as to, you know, uh, are we talking another decade before Hungary gets there? Or this century. <laughs> <laughs> are you confident about that though, Gary? <laughs> well, we will not be there to ask at the end of the century. I uh, agree with that, that the willingness is the one, uh, and that, that's the very important part, because uh, by having not introduced the EU, the control can be a bit stronger over the economy and over the inflation, and I think it's not the interest of the government to lose uh, this type of control at any time soon. Uh, definitely not before. Yeah, although I think it, uh, the concept has changed, so the when like six months ago when 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 the inflation was very high and it still it was uh, uh the the foreign was fluctuating then then even within the government there were i think serious talks about towards the adoption of the euro uh although i i agree that it's more likely that the government is not interested in 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 adopting the the euro uh, uh, because they would give up uh, a ver one very 
strong way of mm. controlling the economy. So look at what happened in Greece. Uh, they were struggling for 10 years because they were they were not uh, ready to to uh, to to let the, the euro go away. Um, and uh, although the government doesn't want to 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 play around with the Hungarian uh, exchange rate, but uh, I think it's 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 a it's a strategic point that that they would like to control. Um, although on the other hand, uh, we see very interesting trends about uh, how Hungary sees its future within the European Union, and uh, Hungary is more interested in in uh, in in taking part in the free market and uh, and be a, a kind of. A, uh, and a gateway between the European Union and, and, and China and for that reason Hungary's interest is very much within the European Union but, but rather in the economic sense than, than in the political sense and maybe the adoption of the euro could also be a good way to, to strengthen this tie to, to, to Europe, to the European economy um, and uh, who knows? So I, I can imagine a scenario where 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 uh, uh, the the adoption of the euro would make sense in order to to keep Hungary connected to Europe in a non-economical sense, but not in a political sense. And I, and if you're a foreign investor, if you're China, uh, and you want to start pushing your goods through through Europe, it makes more sense if you're dealing with one currency rather than than multiple currencies. Okay, y you don't want to be any more specific than sometime in the next century? Uh, I mean, I think it's it's not a question in the next five years, because first Hungary has to uh, fulfill the criteria, and I don't think in the next five years Hungary will be able to fulfill the criteria on a, on a stable basis. Uh, and and then it will be a question in the if if Hungary starts to meet the requirements, then it happens that it it, it means that the Hungary uh, the economy is already in a good shape. If the economy is in a good shape, then the euro is no longer that important, uh, which we have seen in ten years or or five years ago that that uh, it was absolutely not a, a question whether Hungary wants the EU because uh, uh, the, the the euro because Hungary didn't want the euro, um, and if you see, I mean, it, it, this is not a. Uh, a unique thing in Hungary. So look at the Czech Republic, the Poland. They they're not mm, considering seriously adopting the euro either. Okay, that's fair enough. Um, finally, thank you for your patience. We'll we'll get to we'll get to your your area of expertise um, because I think that's it, that, that's important. The the um, we we note that the government has begun to uh, unwind some of the sectoral taxes. Um, I, I would caveat that by saying I also note that the government signed an agreement with Major Telecom before uh, before it unpicked the uh, or started the work and unpicking the telecoms sectoral tax. So those two things, I'm allowed to make this speculation because I'm a journalist. Those two things may be connected, they may not be. But where do you think we're going to go? Do, has the government? got the message that sectoral taxes, special taxes, are not good, are not welcome um, in terms of business planning. So do you think that we may see more of them unwinding? Do you think that we may see new taxes coming in? Uh, the global minimum tax is, uh, is uh, on the horizon. So w what are your expectations for, for tax for next year? Barbara? Okay. Now we are talking, so don't believe anything what we just said before because those were not our areas of expertise. Sectoral taxes are always <laughs> an interesting question. Um, because it can be questioned whether it was a strategic decision any time when they introduced something, or a kind of a penalty for, uh, for a certain sector who did something not so nice, or there was a budgetary pressure that they wanted to collect money from somewhere. In the uh, last, I would say, a year, when anything was introduced, my, my educated guess would be the sole budgetary uh, issue uh, was, uh, was the background. So uh, regarding uh, eliminating sectoral taxes, I think uh, the question is what would be the situation regarding the budget, whether there will be any holes 
that would need some filling that cannot be filled by the general tax system because they do not want to change the general tax system. That it's, um, uh, it's a very uh, good communication methodology having um, a very simplified tax system in general and not talk about uh, the additional extras. So uh, I think budget situation uh, will drive um, these issues uh, for the upcoming one year. But my hope is that one, it will be stabilized, so all the holes are already filled. Uh, then on the long run, it's not an interest for the government and the economy to maintain the sectoral taxes. Which uh, makes it all the more important that we get that EU money, for example, because if you have a hole, you have to fill it somehow. Caroy. Yes, so there, there's two reasons of the sectoral ta uh, taxes. One is the revenue, that the government really needed the revenue. Uh, but uh, but actually, the sectoral taxes are not enough to 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 make it up. Uh, the budget deficit. Uh, so the budget that we are talking about, like thousands of Hungarian foreign budget deficit, and uh, and the sectoral taxes all altogether 800 million billion. So it's uh, it's an important part, but but the sectoral taxes will not make it up. Uh, the, the other reason of the sectoral taxes was actually driving certain uh, sectors to transform, let me say in a very nice way, uh, so to that, uh, that the government's strategy was that uh, in certain sectors they would like a majority of Hungarian shareholders, uh, and these sectoral taxes would, would be there until they reached their goal. So once they reach their goal, then those sectors, uh, their sectoral taxes will, will go away, uh, most likely. This is what we see in the construction sector. This is what we see in the retail sector. Um, this is what we have seen earlier in the bank and the telecom sector. And the, this is why I say that in the banking sector and the telecom sector, in both are good, good examples that uh, the, mm, there is already a majority of Hungarian shareholding. And, and all of a sudden, what a surprise we see that the sector or sec uh, taxes are are going away. So, so I think this is uh, we will ha have to see it both the budget and uh, and uh, this shareholding situation. Um, uh, if you ask my personal opinion, this is the worst thing which we can do for the economy. The sector of taxes because uh, it's not only that it it. Uh, 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 reduces the the growth, but uh, the 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 accountability of the Hungarian governance is in a question. So with this uh, government decrees, uh, and uh, every month we have a new kind of surtax to to certain sectors, uh, investors who are actually very important because they are actually. Uh, feeding the economy are not putting their their money into Hungary so it's uh, this is the in, in long term this is really the worst thing what what the government can do uh, so I, I do hope that that they started to realize how bad uh, these sectoral taxes are uh, in in long term and they will try to to uh, um, uh, um, to give that up uh, we we have seen this actually ten years ago when there was a uh, a crisis. Hungary was in in a in a crisis. There was a very difficult budget situation. There were huge sectoral taxes introduced, and then slowly, not all of them, but most of them went away. And then when we had now the the crisis, they uh, they they uh, they started over. Uh, I hope that we will not make the same mistake twice. So I mean that that once we now uh, realize that that these sectoral taxes are so harmful, uh, they will give it up and and will they will not reintroduce. Just one thing to add, <coughs> because I received this question many times, especially from new investors, that what we think whether there would be a sectoral tax for the automotive sector. So all the sectors, even the favorable ones, are kind of afraid that they are making plans now, but what will happen within two years? Uh, it's a kind of a tendency in the, um, uh, in the investor discussions from the government side that they are not talking about the bad news. 
uh, it's very interesting. I heard it from several uh, companies as well that nobody told us that there is local business tax in Hungary, which is much higher than corporate income tax at the end of the day when you're paying. And it was a not nice surprise when they started the operation. Um, so indeed, I agree with Kano that having investors, making them able to um, plan what their potential uh, benefit from investing in Hungary could be, definitely is not a good direction of in introducing or at least saying that there might be a possibility mm -hmm. of it, the introduction of sectoral taxes. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it underscores that point that Caro was making about, um, well, if you can do it in one area, you can do it in another area. Um, and, 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 you know, you, you don't know what's going to happen until it happens. So um, we haven't yet talked about uh, global minimum tax. Do we, what's going to be the impact of that, do we expect? Is it definitely coming in? Are we very happy with it? It uh, doesn't really matter whether we are happy <laughs> with it. It's coming. And it's, it's, uh, the Hungary was very much vocal against it. Finally gave it up and uh, accepted. This is what's happening all around Europe. Um, so at least the good thing, good part of it, that this is not uh, an increase on a on a Hungarian uh, side. This mm -hmm. is a, this is a European Union uh, uh, directive, uh, and Hungary is going to introduce this top up tax for the large multinational companies. And there is a handful of Hungarian based multinationals who will also uh, suffer this. Uh, many of them will suffer this, although the local business tax can 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 make up the, the some of the difference. So the nine per nine percent is the corporate tax rate. The global minimum tax is fifteen percent, and it's an effective tax rate. So it doesn't really matter that that nine percent is the tax rate itself. If a company enjoys tax incentives or or other way to to reduce the 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 effective tax. Then, then it will be a, a, a challenge how to, to, to finance the difference and how to, to, to make the plans for the next five years. Um, uh, what is interesting now that, that uh, the government was, uh, was very vocal about uh, that, that the global minimum tax will change the, the, the competitiveness or will reduce the competitiveness of Hungary. Uh, now all of a sudden they realize that this can yield them uh, like a hundred billion half uh, additional revenue. So now they are very happy about it, um, and they say they, they say that this will not change the competitiveness. This will, uh, which is you know a contradiction. If we collect hundred billion half additional from the economy, it will change the competitiveness. Obviously, that 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 mo money doesn't remain in the economy. Um, uh, interesting that this hundred million is very similar to that hundred million that Hungary actually uh, loses now because of the termination of the U.S. treaty, uh, because Hungary was enjoying a lot of uh, special structures, international tax structures, uh, that brought additional tax money to Hungary because we had a very favorable tax treaty with the U.S. that goes away. So this loss is mm, somehow uh, compensated by the, the, the introduction of the, of the global minimum tax. Uh, but again, it's, uh, it's, uh, we shouldn't think that, that collecting 100 million, billion foreign from the economy would not change uh, the, the, the GDP and the, the ability of those companies. I suppose, uh, th and this is a comment rather than a question, in terms of messaging, uh, the government is able to say it's not us. It's, uh, you know, this is the global minimum tax and, and this is the EU that's pushing it through. Uh, Barbara, was there anything you wanted to follow up on that? Absolutely, just a personal note as a tax advisor, I love it. It's a very interesting <laughs> interesting new tax and interesting ways of calculation. Obviously, I'm sitting on the, other s uh, on the other side of the table, so what is interesting for me uh, might be painful for you, so sorry for that. That's yeah. why I said that it, it's just a personal note. Um, but indeed, it can have uh, effect on, on competitiveness, but let me just um, um, highlight some other po uh, potential part, because 
if somebody does not want to come to the EU because they do, uh, they are not forced to, uh, we see a kind of increasing competition regarding non-EU countries, especially uh, in developing uh, formal um, uh, Soviet Union countries, let's say Azerbaijan and these countries, and because they are not ruled by the EU regulations, they were able to introduce such kind of tax regimes where they're kind of eliminating all type of of taxes uh, regarding uh, profit, uh, regarding profit, we've seen that. For example, in the case of Azerbaijan, um, uh, we nobody in the EU was able to uh, compete with that. By having the global minimum tax introduced, uh, we can kind of eliminate this kind of un unfair advantage. Let's put it this way: because we are, we cannot do what we want to because we have, we are a, a part of a bigger community. So. A minor one that, that there might be a positive effect as well. Um, and um, indeed there will be additional uh, revenue collected on the budgetary side, but but what is what we do not see now, because most of the companies are still working on it, what will be the real effect? Because it's an effective tax rate. There would be a lot of ba ba background calculation that should be done in order to determine what would be the actual effect on one particular company. You shall make calculations on a, on a, um, on a group level uh, within a country. Uh, you should take into account uh, specific uh, accounting regarding uh, uh, related regulation in order to make the calculation. So that's why I said from tax advisor's perspective, it's juicy, it's really good. Um, and still, there might be a lot of companies uh, that will come to the final conclusion that, yes, something was introduced, but at the end of the day, there is no effect on us. Mm -hmm. Because we take into account local business tax, we take into account um, uh, the uh, corporate income tax we are paying, we take into uh, account all, about all, all the calculation um, um, conditions that we should, and we find our effective tax rate of 15.2. Uh, so no effect at the end of the day. Everyone in this room um, absolutely loves the, um, the local business tax. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, one of the things that we do like to do is, is to uh, extend the opportunity to the floor to, uh, to ask questions from our experts because uh, you are all clever people. You all have It's free of charge now. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I've just remembered I forgot to ask for your prediction on snow, so we might come back to that. Um, so, are, are there any questions from the table, from the floor? We covered everything. Um, good morning. This is Gushan. I'm the Turkish ambassador here in Hungary, but I was in business sector for 18 years, but I changed the side of the table very recently. So, thank you very much for the not optimistic, but also realistic perspective and inputs. So um, we are reading everyday news that foreign companies are coming to Hungary. So for the next year, let's say 2024 or 2025, in the short term, why a foreign company should come to Hungary? So with the current global challenges, with the war in Ukraine, now in Gaza, and with the energy prices, unpredictable, prices, inflation, interest rates, what would you suggest, first of all, for a foreign com uh, company, they should come to Hungary, and why, or whether? So what will be your personal perceptions for this? Thank you very much. Because we are getting to questions every day as ambassadors here, so for from foreigners, thank you. Answer is definitely come to Hungary. <laughs> 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 we cannot say anything else. Um, well, just to highlight one point, we are still within the EU, and we will remain in the EU. Uh, and there were some protectionist rules introduced by the EU in order to, to defend uh, the European economy. And um, uh, by in investing in Hungary, you can um, utilize the benefits of these rules because you are within the borders. But there still there are some advantages you can utilize, which is a rather low cost rate regarding salaries. And, uh, well, it's, from, any, uh, from, a, uh, from an advisor perspective, it's, it's nice to say that we have a cost advantage as a person who receives salaries. It's not nice to say, but still, we are one of the cheapest countries within the EU and within the Schengen zone. At uh, at this stage, so I think this uh, this kind of benefit that being within the borders but still utilizing 
a tremendous cost advantage uh, are the two more things that can be mentioned besides the ideal location in the middle of Europe. Yeah, I, I think a lot depends on which uh, sector uh, industry we are talking about. So if you are talking about manufacturing, uh, especially automotive, then we should not uh, expect any uh, unexpected uh, sectoral taxes, new sectoral taxes, because the government is very uh, uh, committed to attract these industries to Hungary. Uh, uh, although every country says that they have the best infrastructure and the best uh, uh, business climate, uh, but still I think that uh, the logistically Hungary uh, developed a lot, so it has a very good uh, uh, road infrastructure. You can reach um, practically uh, any uh, locations to the European Union uh, very quickly. Uh, there is a big airport which uh, also has a uh, uh, very good infrastructure and uh, and facilities and uh, and uh, those companies who are actually not invest not uh, uh, selling their goods or services in Hungary can can uh, keep their accounts in euro or in dollar uh, they are not very much impacted about the Hungarian uh, economy itself then uh, uh, and uh, because Hungary is still an underdeveloped uh, part of the European Union, uh, <coughs> there are excellent tax incentives and there are also uh, other ways of government subsidies. So I think from an investment promotion point of view, and this is what we have seen, that Hungary is making still much better uh, uh, in the region compared to the other countries uh, in, in terms of FDI. Uh, of course, the focus now is on China and, and uh, South Korea, and they can invest huge amounts. Uh, but I think it, it shows very much that still the investment climate uh, from, a, from a purely economical point of view makes absolutely sense. Uh, what we should forget about is this, uh, this government decree uh, uh, governance, because that uh, for certain sectors, uh, it is especially in the energy sector uh, or in the construction sector. You cannot sell Hungary nowadays, so it's that's, that's Hungary has a very bad reputation in those sectors now. Every year, I think there's one other point uh, uh, to make. Um, every year, I sit down <coughs> with HIPA uh, and we do uh, the Hungarian Investment Promotion Agency. Um, and we do a, a year-end review, and uh, every year they seem to have managed to have broken their, their FDI record. So clearly there are a lot of people um, who see, uh, at the very least, an economic argument uh, for coming here. Uh, any other questions from the table? The mic is on its way. Good morning, Veronika Spanyarova from City. And, uh, Thank you very much for interesting panel discussion. Very well chosen topics. Very much uh, on the on the spot. I would like to have a. Um, I would like to ask about the price levels and the inflation. We spoke about the energy prices. We spoke about the overall inflation, and it is the component of the different categories. So I would be interested to hear your views and the projections what you are hearing for the household energy costs, consumer goods, and the services. If you can go one level deeper on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Veronica. And for those of you who do not know, this is uh, last year's winner of the uh, Expat CEO of the Year Award. <laughs> Karoy, do you want to go first? So we don't know anything about the energy prices, or most likely the households will not feel anything change because the the... This is a political thing that the government wants the households to be uh, unaffected, which means that if the energy go prices goes down, then they pay more. If they, the energy can prices go up, then they pay less. Uh, most likely, I mean, we are now experiencing that the households are actually paying more than the the the, the market price. Um, uh, for for consumer prices, I. I believe uh, that uh, there will be a decline in, in the prices or, or so there will be no further increase because there will be no demand. Uh, so I, I really expect that in the retail sector, uh, the, the, the average will be 
below uh, the inflation because simply the people ran out of the money and if there's no demand enough then 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 the the prices cannot go up uh, so but this is purely my personal view i cannot defend it with mm, studies or stuff like that i think this is just a uh, pure sense that that uh, uh, i don't expect uh, huge pay rises either so maybe the government is pushing to increase the minimum wage and that will have eventually have a have a push in overall but i don't think that we will see uh, 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 salary rises uh, similar than last year or the, the year before again simply just because the not only the people ran out of the money but also the companies ran out of the money which will at least have a good effect on the inflation because it will uh, uh, it, it will control the prices thank you Barbara. energy prices uh I agree that it's a strategic um, goal of the government to have the people pay just until the threshold, so it will remain. We're going to fight the energy prices, uh, as the government usually says, that we are in big fight with those. Consumer prices, I just read a study of um, uh, the Economic Research Institute, um, uh, the GKI, just a week ago, two weeks ago, it was published. We said that finally the consumer stop, inflation has stopped. Or not 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 stop, but nearly stop. So somewhere below one percent that they projected there within October, I think. So uh, the tendency is once again good. Um, obviously, um, there will be a lot depending on on uh, what will happen around us, uh, whether Hungary will be uh, in the next year. If we are talking about next year, whether not just the upcoming month, etc. Um, at the performance of the agricultural sector, what will be the uh, the conditions regarding uh, regarding um, um, rains, whether we can avoid another drought, etc. Because we are a net importer of in, of food products, so that will be a tremendous effect on it. Um, what will be the minimum salary? Um, so I hope it will stop or not increase anymore uh, with big numbers. Regarding services, the projection uh, and my personal projection is that we reached the top as well already. So uh, if you want to maintain um, your operation in the service sector, you have to stop increasing the prices, otherwise there will be no nobody who's going to buy these services anymore. We already see, um, just as a personal example, a um, good friend of mine working in, uh, as a, in a management on a bank, etc. So we are not talking about someone who is a minimum salary. But uh, we just had a discussion um, during the weekend. They said that, OK, we bought a new house. We want to paint it. Maybe I will do it by myself, because uh, the amount the painters are asking for is unbearable anymore. So we reached a kind of a level when everybody is thinking about stopping buying services, uh, because we cannot, we cannot or do not want to finance so much high prices anymore. And, and, there's, and there's always that point where um, if you think it's within your skill set, most people think they can paint a wall. Uh, and if it's hanging wallpaper, maybe that's a different question altogether. Um, ladies and gentlemen, any more questions from the floor? No, we've covered a lot of ground, uh, I think, um, and hopefully you've uh, you found it useful. So um, uh, l l let me try and, and, and up some, as they say, or sum up, if you like. Um, what are our takeaways? Gas. OK, well, gas prices. Um, the war in Gaza is an unknowable, so we don't know. We, we can't know what's going to happen. Um, our expectation is all, is all things being equal, that great catch-all, uh, that, that hopefully we should be OK. Maybe there will be a price increase of, of, uh, of up to 6%. Or maybe we'll see 1978 again, uh, uh, the era that killed the E-type Jaguar. So th th let's let's hope not. Um, but what is happening, um, and and perhaps what what Gaza, uh, the, the the war in Gaza does, is it underlines uh, lessons that were learned early last year that the transition really is important, um, and getting yourself. Uh, off oil and gas and, uh, and fossil fuels uh, as soon as possible um, is a very sensible uh, business approach. Um, 
Should you come to the EU to invest? Yes. Uh, will we get the missing EU funds? Uh, maybe. Uh, which isn't really a very helpful answer. Um, what should we expect? Probably salami tactics. Um, we think that we're okay with three billion, uh, which is the RRF. Um, the four billion cohesion funds is more of a question mark. Maybe we should expect uh, some give and take between, uh, between the government uh, and the EU. Um, uh, and we do know that there are negotiations on an ongoing basis on things like um, uh, the money that goes to Ukraine that, that maybe gives Hungary some leverage for now. Um, but we're mildly optimistic, perhaps. Perhaps not as optimistic as, as the minister, but, you know, he's a minister and he has to be optimistic. Um, what will GDP be in, in 2024? Um, now, here we weren't so optimistic. It'll definitely be zero. And maybe it will be 2%, but, but uh, Kauri, I think if I'm going to be fair, you said 1% to 2%, Barbara said uh, 2%. So, you know, th these are clever people. That seems to be uh, a, a reasonable projection for, for next year. Um, in terms of inflation, keep, keep an eye on the trends. The three-month trend is more important than where we are in any one week, uh, any one month, sorry. Um, but but it, it is clear that we are finally on a, a good trajectory. Uh, let us hope that it continues um, to be so. Um, tax changes. Well, first of all, we are going to get the, the global minimum tax, uh, but that's not the government's fault, so that's okay. Does it affect, uh, does it affect um, GDP? Well, that's to that's to play out, isn't it? That's that's the number crunching that you are doing. I'm sure your people are doing for you. Will will probably tell you that. Um, sadly, we can't give you a definitive answer on this. Um, it's going to have some effect for most people, I would guess. Some people will perhaps come out break even. Um, as long as there are budgetary holes, there needs to be a way found to fill those holes, be that EU money, be that special taxes, we shall wait to see. Uh, and finally, yes, you can go skiing. Uh, we know we're not sure about the snow. We never got a definitive answer on that. Uh, but we think that for next year, um, it, it is in the government's interest, and it seems to have been this way for some time now, to keep uh, to keep the euro stable, uh, sorry, the, um, the the Hungarian forint stable. So we're probably looking at something around about uh, 400 uh, uh, hoof to euro. Um, if it goes much beyond that, it's not good news for Hungary anyway. Um, so I think... And there will be snow in the... And there will be snow. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. There will be snow. Um, and... Uh, uh, and at some point in the next century, we will join the euro. Yes. Okay, those are brave predictions. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your uh, ad attendance. Thank you to Kara Radnai from Anderson and to Barbara Kuntz from PwC thank for you. your expertise once again.